All right, how's it going, guys? Um, the much anticipated how to fix the cylinder release assembly on a Charter Arms 38 Special um, undercover. Now, um, most of the people that are going to be watching this, I've probably at least um, communicated with somewhat. And I have a pretty good understanding of what your problem is um, in putting the cylinder release assembly back together. Um, I also had a horrible issue um, with putting it back together. And I'm, I guess, disclaimer time. I am not a gunsmith. Um, I'm studying to be a gunsmith, but I am more of a, uh, mm, I'm a tinkerer. I, I like to explore every firearm that I get and understand how everything works. And a lot of times I strip them down um, beyond what's recommended. <clears throat> and honestly, I enjoy it because I want to understand exactly how that firearm works before I ever go and use it, especially if I have to rely on it. So um, this was my carry gun for quite a while, and it's now become my backup piece. Um, I really do like it. I know in the last video I talked about how I couldn't hit the broadside of a barn with it, uh, but since then, you know, with a lot of cleaning, it turned out to be just some relatively serious fouling in the barrel and uh, inside the uh, the breech. So now that I've got that cleared out, um, I actually took this up to a class. Oh, I don't know, a few weeks ago, or maybe about a month ago, me and the wife, and. I qualified with it at uh, 20 yards, so it's it's a pretty acceptable uh, backup piece. I definitely wouldn't rely on it because it's five rounds, but as a secondary, it's definitely a, a good choice. Um, now, just so you know, I am going to be kind of uh, hopping back and forth on this video because I want to explain how to put this back together. And I want to do so without actually taking it apart because, as you know, um, from your experiences, it's not the easiest thing in the world to get back together. And with my hands being the way they are with my arthritis, um, dealing with teeny tiny springs is not on the forte of hands this freaking wide. So uh, I don't want to deal with the spring again if I can help it. But... I think with my little whiteboard here, I should be able to explain what the problem is that you're having and how to rectify it. And it's kind of stupid um, when I when I get it all done. Um, you're probably going to have a duh moment just like I did, where you're like, "Oh, why didn't I think of that?" But all that aside, I assure you that um, I have actually taken taken this gun. To the range like I said and I put another hundred rounds through it <clears throat> after I rebuilt the release assembly and it was perfectly fine did not um, uh, react adversely other than I did not lock tight that inside screw which is a huge pain because as you're shooting it will thread itself back in um, to where you can't use the screw to push the cylinder release and throw it out so, aside from that, um, as you can see, it's fully functional. And that was my big concern, and the first time I rebuilt it, it was not. So, you see it's empty. No problems. Um, fully functional. Fully functional. Hammer comes back. Everything works. It cycles. What probably happened when uh, you initially put this back together the way you thought it should go is that when you picked up the pistol to squeeze off a couple test shots, it probably, the hammer probably came back like this and the cylinder didn't cycle. That's my guess because that's what happened to me. Uh, the first two times, actually, I put it back together um, and the wife wanted to murder me. So... I am going to 
illustrate the different parts that are inside of here and how they go together properly. That is the issue. The issue is there is one part, possibly two, that I'm sure, 99% sure, you have put on backwards. That was the problem I had. When I put it all back together, I had a part, two parts initially, they were on backwards. Because you have, you know, uh, let's, let's go ahead and draw them out and we'll uh, go from there. So you have, oh, marker don't fail me now. You have this small cylinder release screw, right? And that's the one. Yeah, I'll do this too. I'll show you where it's at. Um, <clears throat> that's this screw right here. Let's see if I can get the light on it good. This screw here is a screw here. It's a cylinder release screw. That's the screw that gets pushed forward that actually pushes the release and allows it to drop out. That's the one that, if it's not loctited, will thread itself back in to where when you push the release nothing happens because it's too far in it to engage the uh, release on the cylinder. And by the release on the cylinder, I actually mean this little pin right here that holds the cylinder in place when the rounds are in it. So you've got this screw. This screw goes to this assembly. And you know what? For the life of me, I cannot remember exactly what the assembly looks like, so bear with me. I'm just going to kind of four speed it here and it might be close it might not but you have a hole right here which is where this screw goes in and you have a hole right here on this assembly and that's the assembly that is actually inside here right going from there to here what actually pushes that screw, right? And connected to that is this screw with the actual assembly right here. And so that consists of this much shorter screw it's a short screw it's got um, like medium threads on it it's the one that your thumb touches all the time. And you got that screw. You've got a shaped washer that looks something like this. Right? It looks kind of like the uh, assembly itself. And it's got a like a slotted hole in it. It's not a round hole. It's like a slotted hole. Then you've got um, the assembly itself. So that is more like flat on one end. And it comes down about like that. Something thereabouts. And then it's, of course, got the actual thumb detent here. It's got some ribbing. And it's got like this little cutout piece here. Of course, my drawing looks like a fat dude's fingernail but you get you get the point um, and a, there's a hole right here all right then you've got a circle washer okay that's the main parts then and I don't know if you've lost these or not hopefully you haven't uh, it's really easy to do because, again, they're spring-loaded, so uh, being able to keep track of them is a little bit difficult. Uh, you've got a spring. Yes, that is my shitty uh, version of the spring. And then you've got this little pin. And the pin is teeny tiny. I can't stand it. It's the most annoying part of this entire business. And there's a little hole right inside of here. So just keep that in mind. 
So you've got all these pieces in your gun, and you're sitting here going, okay, um, how do I get all these back together and have the gun function? This is what's going to surprise you. Um, if you didn't take notes, um, you'll be fiddling with these three pieces. Right? These three pieces are the bane of your existence if you didn't take notes when you took it apart. Um, so you try to figure out in what configuration these go. Here's how it works. This washer goes on the bottom. All right, so you get this assembly put inside the gun the way it goes. I mean, it only goes one way. Go ahead and thread this screw in. It'll just hold it in place. Not all the way in, so it still has a little bit of room to move. But go ahead and thread the screw in. And this will hold this in place. So you got this inside the gun now. Right? This is all inside. You take this washer. goes on the outside. That's your first piece. So we'll write number one. This piece goes on. Then this piece. There is a slot on the end of this that fits right inside here where the uh, cylinder release meets the frame of the gun. There's a little teeny tiny like little slit and this slides into it on top of the washer. Okay, now make sure for the time being, because again, you're going to be fiddling with this. It's it's not like an exact process. You're going to have to kind of play with it. But this hole is going to line up with this hole, and then this hole is going to line up here, which would be number three. This is where it gets tricky. So you got small circle washer, the actual um, switch, then this washer. Now this washer goes in the opposite, and I'm going to say this again and again, the opposite of the way you think it should go. The way you think it should go is the long side inside this assembly, because again, this is open right here. Um, for the washer to slide inside. And it seems pretty obvious that the long side would go inside. It would look good, so on and so forth. But that is not the way Charter Arms designed this pistol, this revolver. Um, and trust me, it took me three or four times to figure this out. It goes the opposite direction of what you think it should go. So it goes with the long side facing out. So when it goes in, it's going to be facing, you're going to have an overlap like this. It's going to be sticking out. And that slotted hole is going to be right here. Okay? So here, here, this facing this way, just like this, lay it on top, slide it in. It's still going to be sticking out. That's fine. As you can see, since I've got it rebuilt, you can see that washer. Yeah, I'm trying to do this at like a 60 degree angle here. You can see that washer sticking out here on the end. Let me, oh, good lord. I've got the camera on one of my monitors kind of cockeyed here, so it's difficult. But yeah, you can see it sticking out right there. That's the way it's supposed to be. Here's where it gets tricky, though. Remember I said there's that little hole indent right in here. This is where you're going to have the problem. So you got all this stuff laid in and it looks pretty good. You could have your washers lined up perfectly right now and it's not going to matter in about 10 seconds. Because what you're going to have to do is take this spring. The spring's going to have to go inside this indent. And inside that spring goes this pin. That goes inside that indent right here. As you get those in, you're going to have to take this screw, screw that goes on the outside, <clears throat> right here, 
and you're going to have to work that screw in while compressing the spring and pin. I used a, a small, like, uh, precision flathead screwdriver to push it in. That was the only thing I could get that could actually fit in that um, area and allow me to manipulate that screw at the same time. Now, there's a little tiny piece on this, on the um, thumb latch, that goes inside, so you're going to have a little bit of leverage. But just keep in mind, if you slip the slightest bit, it is going to allow that to come loose, and it's going to cause this spring and this pin to shoot across your room wherever you are. So make sure wherever you're working is in a place where if you lose a little piece you can find it. And just as a suggestion, um, you could, you know, like put a towel over you, something, maybe with a lamp. It sounds really dumb, but when these things come loose, boy do they come loose and they go everywhere. Um, I had one just miss my sink drain by like a millimeter like I mean it shot at a good 30 feet so keep that in mind so you're gonna put this spring inside the thumb latch this pin inside the spring you're gonna compress them and as you compress them you're gonna take that screw you're gonna take that screw you're gonna put it in that hole and give it like a quarter of a twist just enough to secure it in place as soon as you get it secured in place and you can rest that pin up against the screw, do it. But rest it on the head, not on the thread. Because the thread is going to go all the way in. So you want to make sure when you rest that pin, you want to rest it on the head of this screw. Like right here. Come on, marker. Those markers being an ass. Yeah, you want to rest it right here, not down here. So as you get that screw threaded, you're going to thread and thread and thread. That pin is going to be resting up against there, and you're going to be good to go. Um, yeah, hell. So keep that in mind. When the um, assembly is finished properly, it's going to looks something like this. You're going to have the um, assembly itself, I mean the, uh, the thumb switch itself. Again, more of my horrible drawing. Just bear with me. Um, you're going to have the cup. And if you're looking at your gun, I'm sure you're seeing exactly what I'm trying to hear. Um, then you're going to have the screw. Right? You're going to have that washer out here like this. You're going to have that second, that circle washer, barely visible, right here. And you're going to have that little spring and rod right here. So that is what it's going to look like when it's complete. Now, let me look at this. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see any of that slot that the uh, screw goes in. But when you work the, uh, the, uh, the switch, the, the thumb trigger, whatever, um, it will move and the washers will not. And that's how you know it works. Um, when I first reassembled it, the washers moved with it. And that was the issue. So, in summation, make sure you put this washer the opposite direction that you think it should go. Make sure the circle washer is on the bottom. And I slap like um, a micro dot of oil, a blue 
on this washer, both sides, under this washer, and I put a little tiny bit of lube on that spring. Again, not so much to lubricate it because it, you know, it's three different pieces moving independently. Um, more to protect it because it seems like a place where it would pick up a lot of gunk. I know mine was a little gunked up when I did it. So that is how you rebuild the assembly on the Charter Arms 38 um, undercover. If you have any more questions about it, let me know. Um, I'm not going to say it's not hard because it is. There's a reason that they ask you not to tear it down to that point, but I know many of you are like me and say, to hell with that. Um, I'll also give you a, since we're sitting here and uh, I've got everything laid out, the, uh, the man cave is not the cleanest it's ever been by a long shot. Right now I'm still working on some stuff, but I'll give you a brief walkthrough. And don't mind my white ass legs. Oh. Now you might be wondering why um, it took me a while to get up. Oh, I'm putting my revolver back. All right, I'm going to pick up the camera here for a second. Okay, so this is my driving simulator. As you can see, it's uh, a little ridiculous. But this was one of the projects I was working on just recently. So I built this and built my new computer setup. Pretty awesome. And I just rebuilt this gun cabinet. I don't know how good that's going to come out. but And now my phone's ringing. I don't know who it is. Yeah. We'll call them back. But, yeah, this is the man cave. Of course, I've got all my supplies and everything back there. But, yeah, so that is pretty much it. That's how you rebuild it. Um, again, if you have any questions, uh, go ahead and post or get a hold of me, and I'll see what I can do to help you. But, again, I'm not a a uh, gunsmith. I just happen to be good at taking stuff apart and putting it back together. So uh, hopefully this is helpful for you. If not, you know, I apologize. Um, as you know, taking that thing apart is not the world's greatest um, experience. So I'd prefer not to have to do it if I don't have to. So um, yeah, if you have any questions, get a hold of me and I'll see what I can do. Till uh, next time, this is the Gary's Man Show, or whatever, whatever the hell I decided to call it. Um, take it easy.